so right now I'm installing the .NET plugin that works with this, I hope. And after that, I want to install Nova Bench and then compare the results with this with this machine running Windows 8 Consumer Preview to the previous run we did in a previous video where we ran it with XP, of course, and see if there's uh, any kind of performance difference or anything along those lines. I'm just thinking as this finishes downloading here, this could very easily become the next Windows Home Edition and uh, consumers will like it more than corporate IT folks. I can just imagine what a nightmare this is going to be for a, for a corporate IT environment that's just gotten used to Windows 7 and maybe only can upgrade whenever the support is pulled for previous versions of Windows and things along those lines. And also knowing that, you know, training costs, training people and, you know, training costs and things like that are a very big expense for a lot of businesses. So, you know, to have to train people how to use computers all over again, especially if they they're not they're not tech enthusiasts and maybe the sum total of their computer knowledge consists of one or two courses they took at a community college on how to click around a desktop, you know, and how to use a mouse and stuff like that. You know, this isn't going to be good for those kinds of environments. I can just see it now. You know, I just hope that when this operating system finally goes to retail, that it finally, you know, that it has a lot more flexibility than this. Like, for one thing, bring back Windows Classic. You know, the whole look and feel for those of us who want to be retro like that. Because I went looking on the uh, online themes directory, and there, weren't, there wasn't any Windows Classic theme there. Nothing that even looked like it. And here's the thing. Look at the size of these windows. They're actually a tad bigger. They're actually a tad bigger than the, uh, than the old classic design. I thought they were trying to minimize the whole window features and stuff like that and kind of sharpen the edges of everything. I don't know. But let's see uh, what we get from Nova Bench when this thing finishes installing. I also uh, think that after I finish this this set of videos, I'm probably just going to roll this thing back to Windows XP and have my laptop run Windows 8 Consumer Preview instead of this. I think it was a mistake to use. You no, know, if I well, not really a mistake, but I just didn't know that the sound card wasn't going to work, which means the front panel is not going to work, which means I can't use the media this as a media station while this OS is on here. And with the conflicts we ran into earlier, we can't dual boot without really carving up the hard drive. I could probably get a partition tool and set that up, but let's just not go to all the trouble. You know, here I've got a more applied situation of running musical instruments and, of course, consoles to record footage for gaming videos through uh, this system. But the laptop is pretty much like a bedroom TV. It's basically audio, video, music. You know, I don't really do anything all that consistent on it. I tried installing a game or two, and I can't even play those games on a regular basis. So, in, in retrospect, I think it should have been the laptop that I made the disk image for, rather, or the crap top, I should say, rather than this machine. Okay, I'm trying to install Nova Bench here. So here's the plan, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish up this round of stuff, things like that. This machine has a little bit of 3D capability, so what I want to do is install Steam, then bring my Steam Apps folder over here so it doesn't have to re-download Skyrim all over again. I'll send it over the Gigabit Ethernet or something along those lines. When I'm done with that, what I'd like to do is see how Skyrim runs and if I can even run Skyrim and have that kind of be the pinnacle of Windows 8 on this machine. And then we'll um, just image this thing back to XP and start working on setting up the laptop. I think I've got enough content though with all this footage I've been capturing that uh, I definitely can make a dedicated playlist out of the Windows 8 experiment, as I think I'm going to call this. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself here. Oh, so uh, shut up about the compatibility. Okay, we're ready for Nova Bench. All right. Okay, everything's detecting like it's supposed to. This is Nova Bench on Windows 8 Consumer Preview, starting in three, two, one, go. Oh, well, I close all programs. Of course I. Floating point operations. Of course, this will be slower than Tuxedo. Integer. MD5 hash. Yes, I will definitely have RAM transfer speed. I'll definitely have enough footage to make a dedicated playlist out of all this stuff. Question is, how am I going to um, divide everything up? So I'm looking at maybe 20 to 30 minute videos with the footage I have so far. Okay, that moved a little cleaner than in Windows 7, so that's good. Ooh, there's our 3D. 
800, 807, 815, 803, 855, frames per second, oh, 910, 918, 945, 966, 965, frames per second was about the same, and I'm sure the drive write speed will be around the same too. And let's see what we get for a number. 651, let's upload this to Nova Bench's website and compare it to the results running Windows XP to see if there's any performance differences. I'm not so sure there will be. Um, I don't know if the sound card will really affect anything that much. Cool, it actually improved by a couple of points. Probably not a big enough difference to make a significant difference in most games though, but we'll definitely have to check it out. So here we are back in the start screen and I've installed LibreOffice. And one of the things I like about li listing all the programs on here is that I can get rid of that quick start menu that I usually had on the, uh, on the desktop back in the day. You know, I used to always have on my old systems, let's go to the desktop and let me show you. I used to always have a quick launch type thing along the taskbar along the bottom for my most commonly used programs. But if, you know, if this Metro start screen can actually serve that, a similar purpose to that, that would actually work quite well. Let's start up LibreOffice Writer. So we start that up. And the old-fashioned app still has this little splash screen when it starts up. Requires Java. Hmm. Let's see if Java will install on this machine. Okay, Java's installed, and it looks like it works. Nice. How about something a little less boring? Okay, Steam. Let's do this. Now, if Steam works, what I'm going to do is bring over my Steam apps file through the network from the main system, so it doesn't have to re-download all my games after I sign it. Oh, that was quick. Oh, I see. Good. Let's see how long this is going to take to transfer over the network. Not a good sign when the Steam Apps folder takes a while to copy before I start trying to send it to the other computer over the network. Just make it a copy of it, then I'm going to send the copy over the network in case something messes up. Okay, we're ready to go. Steam apps for Windows 8 experiment on Tuxedo. There's our folder. Let's see how long it's expecting to. What? Click and drag. Ooh, cute. Nice. It says copy to desktop and it pops open a window. A little more user friendly in that respect because so many people I know of don't, uh, so many people I know of don't know about right dragging and, and I didn't know about it either until I was taught it my freshman year in college. And it has been so useful ever since. Sweet, this is a nice new oh, new window, so I can actually watch a graph of the speed that it's transferring at. And it's faster over the gigabit ethernet than it is over, than it is copying from one part of the hard drive to another to make that copy. Oh nice, four minutes time remaining, 40, 45 megabytes a second, sweet! Now while that's copying, I'm going to go get my save games off the other computer and bring them over via the plug-in drive. So let's see if this old trick works to turn off a plug-in drive by ejecting it, even though technically those things don't eject. Okay, anything on the screen? Eject! Eject! Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Save to remove hardware. So there is still some use in the taskbar for that. That's cool. Anyways. Sweet! I'm liking this graph thing, as well as the whole 100 megabyte per second transfer rate thing here. This is definitely better than the transfer windows in Windows 7, which were downright clunky. And we're in! Skyrim's up and running. Good stuff. This is Skyrim running in Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Steam had to install DirectX, of course. And it was, there were some other things, I think, the Microsoft VC or something like that, whatever that is. But other than it being in 4.3, because it's on my old monitor, I'd say it works pretty well. Except the sound's all messed up. Loading times are terrible, though, but that's a hardware issue because the SATA drive in this thing's really old. Fun stuff. And, of course, Skyrim scenery looks awesome as usual. Okay, let's wrap things up here. Okay, that'll be enough for now. So... What can I say about Windows 8 so far? Well, first things first, the biggest thing I'm con- oof, I <laughs> went to click start and I hit the Audacity icon by mistake. <clears throat> Anyways, oh nice, we got Nova Bench and Steam in there too. The number one thing I'm concerned about with Windows 8 is the whole jack of trades thing that I mentioned way back at the start of all this. 
basically there's a fine line between Microsoft changing and adjusting with the times and creating an operating system that can work on all different kinds of devices and bring some um, bring some consistency to the various types of computing devices that people use and an operating system that is basically a jack of all trades but an ace at none that tries to be everything to everything but ultimately isn't much of anything so far Windows 8 is definitely walking a very fine line between those two between those two situations I just hope it ends up on the right side of that divide because this does have potential it just needs to be polished up a lot between now and release I'm going to switch this machine back to Windows XP now and I'm going to start prepping the crap top for installation tomorrow. We're going to keep this going as a regular series talking about various things involved with Windows, the Windows 8 consumer preview but I'm going to switch it over to my laptop so I can get my music station back and get this thing working again. Besides, I use the laptop more regularly than I use this anyways but um, it's not going to step on the toes of the main system if I install Windows 8 on the crap top. So anyways, till next time, yeah, Windows 8 Consumer Preview looks interesting, but um, it'll take some getting used to. Until next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.